Hi, this is Leonard from Cosmic Sound and this is an exciting new product from Roland in their Boutique series and it is the TR09, a perfect little recreation of the TR909 drum machine from the 1980s. Before we get into talking about the specifics of this machine, uh, let's just cover a couple of things. First of all, the TR909 itself was a classic piece of hardware made in 1984 and 1985. It began effectively the sound of house and techno. If you've produced house or techno, or even if you've listened to it, you will be familiar with the sounds in this machine. Although a lot of us have had to use either samples or plugins for a long time. The technology that goes into these uh, is Roland's ACB proprietary technology, which is a component modeling system. So whereas a lot of other virtual analogs will model the waveforms from original hardware, they actually model the structure, the components of the piece of hardware. And that gives them a better opportunity to create a perfect recreation of it. Before we uh, get into talking about this machine and how it actually functions, I just want to quickly refer you over to the TR8 because we've got a bit of a comparison going on here as the sounds of the TR909 are also in here. You'll see this first of all there's a bit of a difference in size. We have a few extra controls on the TR8 which you'd expect being a, a more modern machine but what we have on the TR09 is a much more authentic recreation in terms of feel and use. Of course it is much smaller so they have actually uh, changed a couple of things most notably the sequencer row here. So these are little click buttons rather than the bigger push buttons on the TR909, but that's exactly what you'd expect on a smaller machine. To the TR09 itself now. So on the front panel, like I said, we've pretty much got everything you'd expect to find on TR909. I'll just run you quickly through it. We've got stop and start controls here. We've got a few controls here. We can control uh, the parameters pretty much of the sequencer more than anything else. And we can also select instruments and we've got a shift which gives us uh, the secondary functions that you can see under this row of buttons. In terms of the instruments, we've got exactly what you'd find on the 909. Your bass snare, three toms, rim shot, clap, closed and open hi-hats, crash cymbal, and ride cymbal. The sequencer, of course, looks exactly the same as well. And even this row of controls along the top is, it's almost exactly what you'll find on a TR909. There's a couple of small differences there. Below here is your enter key and your total accent control, which I'm gonna show you how all of this works. That's having a look at the actual physical functions on the front panel. What we have going on on the back, we've got MIDI in out here. We've also got your mix in so you can send other signals through the machine if you want to actually run everything into it or one other thing into it and then out to, a, out to your sound system rather than having to use a, a mixer, you can do that. We've got two outputs, so this is your main output and your phones, then your volume control. Your power for this unit is delivered from micro USB, you can connect it to a computer or if you have a power adapter that takes USB, you can use it with that too. It's also battery powered. It also has a built-in speaker as well if you're not actually connected to anything for sound. So great if you're traveling and you just wanted to make some patterns while you're on the road, then this is the perfect thing for doing that. There are a couple of other things that you'll find on this machine that is not on a TR909. First of all, we have a compressor. So we can hit the compressor button there and then we can dial in the amount of compression that we want. I'll show you what that sounds like a little bit later. And the second one is this trigger out. So on the TR909, there was a trigger out which was based off the rim shot. So whatever was programmed there would send out trigger pulses, which you could use to trigger other pieces of hardware. On here, we actually have a distinct trigger out in itself. So even though it's located up here, we can actually program in our own trigger out pattern that will be sent from that port, which again, I'll show you when we get into actually programming. Let's now play something. We've got four tracks that we can play. So what these are is a sequence of patterns. I'll again come back to that a little bit later. Then we have three pattern groups and inside each one of those we have 16 patterns which are triggered using the buttons along the bottom. Let's just get something playing. There's a lot of patterns built in already. Of course, this is the kind of machine you're gonna be programming your own. So if you need to do that, you can actually overwrite the ones that are in there. Although there are a lot of slots there. I think you have 96 patterns in total. Let's play something now. So what I'm gonna do, first of all, I'm gonna select my bank group and pattern. So we'll go shift and you'll see as well, we've got the little orange box there that denotes that what we're gonna be doing when we press these buttons is affect what we can see here. So shift. First of all, I'm gonna jump over to bank one where we've got some preset patterns in there. This is the kind of machine you're gonna program your own anyway, but they've got some in there, you can overwrite them if you want. 
Next thing I need to do is make sure I'm in a pattern group. So we've got one, two, and three. And then I can choose any one of 16 pads. It's a total of 96 patterns that we can have in here, which is plenty for anybody. So I'm on pattern, pattern group one, and I'm on my first patch here. So all I need to do is hit play. So what I'm noticing now, we're actually in track mode. So we're actually running through a sequence of bars. If you don't want to be in track mode, just hit pattern play one, and then we're just gonna play a single pattern. So off we go. And I can change what that pattern is just by hitting the buttons along here and they'll trigger after a bar finishes. And like I said, these are all built in already, but they're overridable. So while we've got this going, let's just have a quick check of that compressor. So I'm gonna jump into compressor mode. So it's actually quite a subtle compression. You don't really sort of notice a lot until you give the bass drum a bit more. And then you'll sort of notice as I turn it down, it drops a bit of level. So that's the compressor. Let's have a look at the actual controls for each of the instruments now. So exactly the same as what's on the TR, TR8, so there's, there's no real difference here. On your kick drum, you've got tune control. What I'll do is actually turn these down. So here's your kick drum. We can tune it in. You've got your decay control and your attack. Next one over is the snare drum. We've got control over the tune. We can also adjust the tone and the snap on it. And if, if you've used 909 sample packs before or one-shot samples, you'll appreciate the beauty of being able to actually dial this in rather than having to, to work through a whole sequence of samples to find the perfect snare. Next up, let's move over to the toms. So. Think we've actually only got the uh, low and the mid programmed into this pattern but we have don't have a lot of controls on these there's the just your tune and your decay and then we'll move over next to the rim shot on this one you only have a basic level control then we've got our hi-hats Probably the most distinctive sound of the TR-909 is that open hi-hat we know from everywhere. Here's the clap. Again, one of those characteristic sounds that we all know. The ride symbol there. And there's a crash symbol on here. There's actually something really important to be said here, which is if we look over at the TR-8 again, we have some extra controls on here that we don't see on the TR-09. And that is basically because the TR-909 did not have them. But the folks at Roland have put in those extra controls through your menu system. And the way we do that, we're gonna go shift, and then you'll see down here, we're on the compressor button, we've got edit. What you'll first notice here is we have three parameters. So we can affect the gain, which is great if you find, say for example, the clap on this is quite loud. If you wanna move that knob totally from the bottom to the top, then you could turn down the gain of that particular instrument to give you that ability. The second thing we can do is to tune instruments. So again, if we look back over here at the TR8, we have tune on the rim shot, for example. So we can now do that to the rim shot here, which only on this machine has a level control. What I'm gonna do is just bring up the rim shot by itself. So I'm gonna select tune. I'm gonna tell it I wanna control the rim shot. And there it is, we can tune that rim shot. We can go, if we get back down to zero, we can go negative as well. So you can really set that wherever you want it. I'm now gonna jump back into that edit mode again. This time I'm gonna select decay, or hit enter, then I choose my instrument, which in this case is gonna be my ride symbol. 
Now we've got the ride selected. We're at 100% at the moment. I'm going to turn up my ride. And then what I can now do is start turning this decay time down. So there's a couple more button presses to get these things than what you have on the TR8, but it's all still in there. So you're not really losing anything um, by working on the TR09 by comparison. All right, so that's basically the instruments that are in there. That actually shows you the sounds. Um, let's now take a look at how you would sequence a pattern. What I'm going to do here, we'll get out of this right back to the beginning here. First thing I probably will want to do is set my tempo. You've got tempo control right here. If you want to actually get more detailed than one beat per minute, you hold down shift, and then this gives you increments of a hundredth. So you have plenty of fine control over it. Um, if you're needing to try and sync this with something else. Now we've looked at all the things that are on here, let's look at writing a pattern. So first thing we're going to do is select a pattern. So I'm going to go shift. I'm going to actually go over to the second bank. So now I'm in bank two. Let's stick with pattern write group one. So I'm going to hold down shift. When I hit this, we'll start flashing. So now we're in pattern write mode. Now there's already a pattern in here. But quickly before I move on to showing you how to put a pattern in, let's just have a look at the scale button here. So what I can do with this, you can see I'm basically changing what, the, what the each step represents. Sort of a triplet pattern. Most of the time you'd probably be working in this mode, which is just your standard four steps per beat. So let's stop this. What I'm going to do now is clear this pattern so we've got something completely blank. So we'll clear that. Now when I hit start, there's nothing there. And bear in mind, what I'm showing you here is exactly how the TR909 would have been programmed as well. There's effectively no difference. So first thing I need to do is select my instrument. So you'll notice that a lot of the instruments, most of them actually have two buttons per instrument. And in this particular way of programming, all you need to do is use one of them. So you can um, we'll hold down instrument select. I can actually select either one of those and it'll be the bass drum will be programmed in before you can start programming the pattern. So I'm looking at, I mean, pattern number one as well. I could have chosen any of these and it wouldn't, it would have still worked. So I'm going to hit play. Once we start seeing the light chasing across the, the steps, now we're actually ready to program. So again, I can hold down instrument select at any point and it will show me what instrument I've got programmed. So, all right, so the first thing we'll notice here is the level I'm getting out of this is not what I had before with the inbuilt patterns. And that is because there are actually two volumes uh, of step we can use on the bass drum, snare drum, the toms, and the closed hi-hat only. We actually have two different volumes. So I'm gonna hit this again. Now we'll get full volume on these steps. And in the options, you can actually change the order that this works. So you can have it so that the first press gives you the full volume and the second press will give you half volume. So here's our kick drum. At this point, you know, you, you can dial things in, you can tune this and uh, adjust your levels, shape the drum. Next thing I'm gonna do is enter the, uh, the traditional, I suppose, hi-hat pattern. So what I'm probably gonna do first of all is just drop the, all of these on. Get some of this. If anyone's familiar with Jeff Mills, you'll sort of start to recognize these are the sort of things he does. You've got your decay control. Now, what I'm gonna do also here, I'm gonna throw in some open hi-hats. What you'll notice when I hold down the instrument select on this, it's exactly the same as all the other ones, but we have a closed and an open. If I want the open, what I have to do is press both of them. Now I'm on open. And what happens here is where I've actually added these open hi-hats, it's removed them from the closed hi-hat, but the open hi-hat will be gated by the closed hi-hat when that next triggers. So again, I've got some decay control over that. Now at this point, I'm not, kind of, not quite happy with the pitch of this open hi-hat, but uh, because I don't have a pitch knob on here, I'm gonna have to go in and do the edit again. I'm gonna select edit. I'm gonna move this one over to tune. Let's hit enter. Now I'm ready to go on the open hi-hat. 
And there it is. So we can tune that right down, we can tune it right up. Let's just leave it at its flat level there. So we've already looked at how we could control the ride symbol, so let's maybe put a few of those in there. What I'm noticing on this one is the ride's actually quite quiet, so I'm going to jump into here, edit mode again, we're going to gain this time, let's select the ride. So I've got some more level on the ride now, let's jump back out, let's maybe turn down these decay times as well. Now the cool thing with the 909 as well, the toms in it are actually quite useful, you can make bass lines with them essentially, so let's just have a look, look what we can do with the low tom. Let's jump in there, let's get it some level. Now let's move on to the mid. over now to the high tom. If we get rid of our ride for a second, I'll just show you. So now we've got just the toms playing and what you can do here is actually tune them in. So. kick drum back in. Maybe let's add some clap now. This is where it can get maybe a little bit interesting. Let's try this compressor out now. Let's not go crazy with it, we'll just leave it there. Now the snare drum is also a really interesting thing to use on this. It's a really nice big noisy snare drum. And I'm going to actually use this more in a context of using it for a build up than you would as a snare drum. And you'll notice you can get some really different characters out of the snare drum, so if I drop it back to that, You can also almost get sort of a tom white -like quality out of it as well. Let's have a look at the rim shot. So what we've got is actually a really powerful little machine. You can get a lot done with it. And it gives you that sort of classic house or techno sound. It works perfectly in any track. Of course, you can layer it with other drum sounds in your software if you wanted to use it that way. And as you can th see, it's actually great as a live tool as well. Um, as I mentioned, you see Jeff Mills playing these a lot and he'll play it almost with nothing else or actually for long periods with nothing else. It's really quite a versatile little machine even though it only has a few sounds in it. And from the point of view of someone actually using it, it's great fun and it feels authentic when you stand in front of it. Um, the other thing I did mention before, which is the crash cymbal. So I'll just show you what that sounds like. And 
we have a tune for that as well. Should mention as well that on the TR909, it wasn't a totally analog machine. It was actually a hybrid. And I think it was probably one of the first machines to do that, if not the first. So everything, all the drums and the, the toms and the rim shot and the clap are all analog synthesis. All the cymbals were actually little samples. So you sort of had the best of both worlds. So let's just have a look at a couple of other things I can do this with now it's playing. Let's get rid of that crash symbol. The first thing I want to do is control the shuffle of this pattern. So I'm going to hold down shuffle. I can do this two different ways actually. So I can either use the knob or I can use one to seven here. Just select pre-programmed values or off for number eight. The other thing we can do is get rid of uh, all these other things. So we can have flam on any of the instruments between here. So your bass drum, your snare drum, and your toms. So the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to hit instrument select. I'm going to hit snare drum. So I press both of them to get to the flam setting. Now let's turn down everything I'm not using just so you can hear what this does. So now I've just got that snare drum playing. And wherever I put a, a trigger or a step now will be flam. And what we can do is adjust the distance of that flam, holding down this button. And that's really close together up this end. It's much further apart. So let's turn those off. There's another way we can enter patterns too. So I'd hold down shift and I'm going to hit tap. So this works kind of like just by playing the drums. This is probably the only thing for me where the little tiny buttons are not particularly wonderful. So what you do <clears throat> is we hit start. And it's as simple as that. So you just play in the rhythm that you want and then the next bar over it's, it's in the pattern and it's quantized. So as I said, it doesn't feel particularly wonderful doing it that way. And I don't think a lot of people would use it that way anyway. To fix that, if I wanted to do that, I can jump back very easily into step mode. Start playing, select my bass drum, and then I can just get rid of the extra steps I created there. So now we've all got, got our patterns in there. One, one thing we'd probably want to do is be able to copy one pattern to another. So the problem that we have is that my first pattern here is completely different to my second pattern. And I want them to be the same so I can then add some very sort of small variations to that pattern so that when I, ha I have a sequence of patterns that might just have one or two different things. What I'm going to want to do is get pattern one into the pattern two slot. So this is where I'm going to want to go. First, first thing I have to do is select the destination. So that's number two. So we just make sure that that's the one. Right now, next thing I'm going to do is hit copy. So that's under number 11, copy, and I'm going to select which pattern I want. So same deal again, but we want number one this time. And then I'm going to hit enter to complete that. So when I go back to pattern one, let's go back to pattern mode. Number two, there we go. We have the same thing. And then what I could do on pattern two, for example, let's go back into pattern right mode. We could have um, maybe a, a different pattern with, let's try the sip crash symbol, just something really obvious. So we jump back into pattern play mode. And we don't have anything on number one but the crash symbol comes in on number two. Now what we could do is we can actually set this up so that it'll just play one and two in a cycle. If I hit both of these, these will now become uh, grouped. So once we play through one, it'll move over to number two, back to number one, back to number two. 
and so forth. Now, if we wanted something even more detailed than this with more patterns, we can actually create a track. So in the TR09, there are four tracks. Again, this is the same as was what was on the TR909. So I'm gonna hit track and I'll just show you how one of them works. So let's go back to this again. So we're back in group one. And I should mention as well, you can have two groups of the tracks. So you have eight in total. So what you'll see is happening is we're triggering a different pattern each time this ticks over. So if we wanted to make our own, let's just find one that's blank. Let's maybe go back to bank two again. Number one, okay, that's blank. We're gonna enter pattern write mode. And what we have here, so now we've, you can see we've got bar one. I'm gonna select back to my patterns again. So bank two, pattern one, let's go number one. Once we're ready to write the track, so I'm gonna start this playing. So it's just gonna sit on, on number one until I move to the next one. So I make sure I've got the right one selected. So I'm gonna go pattern one, and move on to number two. I wanna have my second pattern in there. Number three, I'm gonna go with the second pattern again. Number four, I'm gonna go with my first pattern. And then I'm gonna hit stop. Now I wanna go back to track play mode. So I'll just do that. I'm gonna go back to bar number one. And off I go, let's see what happens. So that's playing back a track. Um, the only other thing I haven't mentioned to you yet is the little knob here we have called Total Accent. So I'm gonna actually just jump back into a pattern again. So let's go back into pattern right mode. And what I'm gonna do, you see we have Total Accent under here. So you program it like it's another instrument. So we'll go Instrument Select, Total Accent. So I'm just gonna put these in some random places so they jump out. Then as I turn this knob up, there we go. So on the kick drums, you can certainly notice it. And you can, you can have varying amounts of that. You've got a knob here so you can control that. What this does is applies accent to the step rather than to the instrument. So everything that lands on that step will be amplified. Now I'm gonna move over to my computer and show you how I've got this set up. So I've set up a few instruments here. The important ones are gonna be these two to five. This is an external instrument I've set up in Logic. And the key thing we have here, these are my inputs, which are actually my USB outputs on the TR09. And you can see we've got a set of five there. So I'm gonna make sure they're successive. Five, six, seven, eight. Final one will be nine and 10. The first one is if you just, um, if you're not using that USB functionality, everything will just come out of the first one. So now what I have to do is set up which instruments are gonna come out of each output from this into the inputs of my computer. So I'm gonna jump into menu. We'll move down to USB one. So whichever thing is flashing is what I'm sending to that output. So at the moment, I just want my bass drum only to be going to number one. And this is pretty commonly how you'd wanna use it. You wanna have control over that drum separately. I'm gonna to move to number two. Again, I'm just gonna have my snare drum. So I have totally independent control of my snare drum. USB 3, I'm gonna include all the instruments in the middle, so my toms, my rim shot, and my clap. Number four, these are gonna be all my cymbals. So let's just have a look what happens. Let's jump out of here. Pattern's ready to go. I'm gonna hit start. Now let's have a look at the software. So you'll see I'm receiving everything in through these extra four ports here. So, what we'll notice here, the second one there, that only has the bass drum on it. Moving down here, this one only has the snare drum on it. This one is all my percussion, other than the cymbals. And finally, this one here just has just my cymbals on it. So the beauty of this being I can edit all these separately, I can record them separately, I can apply effects to them separately if I wanna do that. We've gone through pretty much everything on here now. So the last thing to mention is the awesome built-in stand that you get with this. I'll show you how that works. So there's just a release here. Works very similar to the keyboard for the uh, initial boutique releases. 
and there's the second level there so I can have it quite upright I can have just a medium level slight rise or I can have it flat you can also buy these cases now separately for the original boutique series if you want to have those instead of the keyboard thanks for watching we've been looking at the TR09 new from Roland if you'd like more information you can come and see us in store like us on Facebook or check us out at cosmic.com.au no matter what you play or want to learn Australia's leading musical instrument retailer Cosmic Sound offers a range of guitar bass DJ high tech drum and PA equipment to suit your needs check us out online at cosmic.com.au